Do you have sentimental clutter that's weighing you down? Maybe hand-me-downs like your grandmother's china or piles of old photos. Or maybe it's your kid's artwork or your mom's old clothes stuffed in a closet somewhere. Does it make you feel guilty to even think about getting rid of those things? Here's how to declutter sentimental things without the guilt. After my paternal grandmother passed, I inherited her antique deacon's bench. For years, it fit our home style, it fit the size and shape of our home, and I loved that bench. But then we changed homes and the kids grew and it just didn't quite fit the same way as it used to. So I had to decide whether to keep that bench just because it was my grandmother's or to part with it because it was causing me stress every time I walked by it. I also inherited a white bone china set from my maternal grandmother but she passed away when I was a teenager, and then later, Dean and I didn't have room for it in any of our houses. So for years, this lovely china set sat tucked in a Rubbermaid tote wrapped in old tea towels and aprons and things like that in my mom's basement and then later my sister's basement. At some point or another, all of us will have to deal with things that people that we love and cherish give to us that we don't necessarily want or have room for. Because we love and cherish those people, we often assign, accidentally, emotional value to those things that they've given us, which then becomes sentimental clutter, which for some, according to a Yale University medical study, can actually be painful to get rid of. But hanging on to all those things and feeling the stress and pressure of that is not the same as holding on to the lovely memories that come with those things. It is possible to keep the memories without all the stuff. So how do you declutter sentimental things? The very first thing and the most important thing to remember about decluttering sentimental things is to not start with those First, start somewhere simple, like a bathroom or even a kitchen, because in those spaces, there's hardly ever anything that has emotional or sentimental attachment to it. So don't deal with sentimental clutter first. As you declutter things that are not sentimental items in your home, you will gain confidence in your ability to make decisions as to what to keep and what to get rid of. You'll gain a little bit of muscle memory when it comes to decluttering, and that will help you a lot when it comes to decluttering sentimental things. It's really important to note that keeping sentimental items is not bad. They only become a negative when you don't have the space for them or when they're causing you stress and pressure instead of reminding you of the good memories that come with them. So what if, instead of keeping all the things, you kept a select few items instead. For example, my grandmother's bone china set. I was given a massive collection of this lovely white bone china with a gold rim on it. Now, does that go with pretty much anything and everything we have in the house? Yes. However, over time, I can only assume that my grandmother purchased additional pieces when some got broken or in case some got broken. So when I was given this collection, it was this random set of, you know, 11 dinner plates and 15 cups and saucers, but only eight of the salad bowls. So instead of keeping all of that, I pared it down and I only kept eight full place settings, that's it. I did not keep all of it, I kept some of it. By doing that, I'm preserving the memories and enjoying using those dishes and I have the space to store them. Less is different than none. On the flip side though, sometimes it is better to part with something and keep the memories instead of the thing. I did this with my other grandmother's deacon's bench. It just didn't fit our home after a few years. It didn't fit what I needed for the kids. It didn't fit our space. It didn't fit our design style. So rather than feeling strong Dress every time I walked past it, I decided to ask my sister if she wanted it, and she did. So now that Deacon Spencer, my grandmother's, lives at my sister's house and fits their home perfectly. How do you declutter sentimental things? Ask yourself these six questions. One, what is significant about this item? Give yourself time to feel the feelings, to remember the person you associate with this item. The second question to ask yourself is, am I only keeping this because I feel like I should? Is there guilt associated with it? The third question to ask yourself when decluttering sentimental items is, will I use this item? The fourth question is, do I truly love it? The fifth question, and this is a really important one, is do I have space for it? That's a huge one when it comes to anything, but especially with sentimental items. The sixth question is, can I somehow preserve this 
without keeping the item? Can I take a picture? Can I write a journal entry? Anything like that. And this is key, especially if you don't have space in your home for items. Asking yourself these six questions will give you clarity when deciding what to keep and what to get rid of when it comes to decluttering sentimental things. That's how you declutter sentimental things. You remember that keeping them is not bad. It only becomes a negative when you don't have space for them or they're causing you stress. You don't tackle them first when you're decluttering your home. You do other things that have no emotional hold on you. And then you ask yourself some important questions like, do I have room for it? Do I love it? Am I only keeping it because I feel like I should or I feel guilty thinking about getting rid of it? That's how you decide whether to keep these items or to find another way to preserve those memories. That's how you declutter sentimental things. I've got another video coming soon with what to do with the things you decide not to keep when you're decluttering. For more home decor and organization ideas, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss a video.